Testing 42, Alien Species. Welcome to Project Serpo. This channel aims to uncover the truth behind the alien and UFO mystery. This video is about the different alien species visiting our planet Earth. I will be looking at evidence and testimony which suggests that we have been visited by several different races of alien not only in recent years, for over thousands of years. What do they look like? Where do they come from? How do they behave and what they eat? To get the ball rolling let's look at some of the witnesses who have provided a testimony about the existence and characteristics of aliens. Clifford Stone worked for an elite team in the US Army with a top secret security clearance. Stone was involved in the recovery of crashed or shot down UUFAS. The team's job was to secure. The crash site removed all of the evidence and transported to secure military bases away from the public eye. During his long career he experienced 12 crashed UFAS and witnessed alien bodies on some of these craft. Stone also claims that the US government has a book entitled EBTV Guidebook that stands for Extraterrestrial Biological Entity and this book describes the physiological characteristics of 57 species of alien. Stone also visited some of the deep underground bases where aliens are believed to reside on. He has confirmed that reptilian beings do exist at these places. The bases are two and a half miles deep and are several cubic miles in size. There are believed to be many throughout the world. The notable ones are in New Mexico and as for in Nevada where Thomas Costello worked full time and stayed in the underground base. He has given extensive descriptions. Various aliens including the small gray and the reptilian beings. Bob Dean was a sergeant in the U.S. Army and because of his cosmic top secret clearance has access to a document entitled On Assessment. This document concluded that in 1964 there were four known groups of extraterrestrials visiting us. Robert Collins served in the US Air Force and the field of avionics. He has given information about various aliens believed to have been captured by the US military. The information he provided was about the small gray one of which survived the Roswell crash and was kept in captivity by the Americans for a few years until it died. Phil Schneider worked for the US government on black ops as a geologist and structural engineer. He had a top security clearance and had access to sensitive information about aliens. Three months before he was murdered by the government he described an encounter he had with two tall gray aliens. As you would expect they are small and gray between 3 to 5 feet tall. They are erect standing bipeds which means they walk on two legs with a very large head containing two brains. Their heads are larger than a human's head with no hair eyebrows or eyelashes. They have large block opaque common shaped eyes which are slanted at approximately 30 degrees on have vertically slit pupils. The eyes are described as being very creepy under make a lasting impression on people who have seen them. The heads are domed and look similar in shape to a human fetus head. They have spindly arms and legs and a fin torso slightly resembling a praying mantis. Their long reach down to their knees when standing with their arms by their sides and a small paw leads to claw-like spindly fingers. Normally, they have two short and two long fingers but some only the have three fingers. Fear skin is slightly reptilian in texture gray in color and tough. Small feet with four small claw-like toes complete this insect-like creature internally they have a non-functioning digestive system waste products being secreted through the skin. How do they behave? They are extremely logical beings and have a love of technology. Religious activity annoys them. Any the activity which does not have an obvious logical context confuses them which means they have no sense of humor, don't understand poetry, their movements all very slow, deliberate and precise. Although they have high intelligence they do take a long time to make decisions they are believed to possess a telepathic ability which, as a group gives them, a collective consciousness. What are they up to? Some types of small gray work for the draconian reptilian alien and are subservient to them. Small gray aliens are involved in several unpleasant activities they abduct humans for genetic experiments and mind programming they use implants to monitor the humans. Attempts by humans to remove these implants have sometimes resulted in the death of the human. After many years of practice and research they have become experts in the manipulation of both the human body and mind. 
One of their projects is to create a new type of being the human gray hybrid. It is the small gray alien that has been recovered from UFO crashes such as Roswell and Missouri. What do they eat blood and other biological fluids is the mainstay of the small gray's diet. They abduct human beings and certain animal usually cattle to make these fluids. The formula they produce includes amniotic water this is the nourishing and protective liquid contained within the womb of a pregnant woman. Blood plasma and several of the soft tissue body parts which are raw usually from a cow or bull. The gray's requirement for bovine innards explains the thousands of mutilated cattle which are found all over the world. The mixture is a nearly clear mixture with the texture puree peaches they try not to consume this substance around humans because the odor is totally obnoxious to us. Another chilling part of their diet is a substance which is generated by the human brain when we are under distress or in fear of our lives for. Phil Schneider claims they consume a substance like a recreational drug as a human would use cocaine. The substance may well be a hormone and is sometimes known as life energy or solar energy. Where do they come from? The small gray comes from the constellation of Zeta Reticulum which is 30 million light years from Earth. They originate from the fourth planet around the second star of Reticulum. This is only observable in the night from the southern hemisphere. As you would expect they are large and gray between 6 to 8 feet tall. Their height is often exaggerated by humans when describing them. They are erect standing bipeds and generally look similar to the small gray. Their heads are large with no hair, eyebrows or eyelashes. Their skin is extremely pale in color almost white. It is possible that this race is actually a hybrid of the short gray and a taller race. The nose is much larger than that of the small gray. How do they behave? They have similar characteristics to the small greys but less vicious towards humans but still considered hostile. What are they up to? The large greys have an overseeing role over the small greys. They are known to have carried out diplomatic activities and missions such as negotiating treaties. It is the large grey species which met with President Eisenhower in 1954 and formed Grey Order Treaty. This treaty gave the Greys permission to abduct cattle in exchange for technology given to us by them. They share the same interests as the small grey in areas such as genetic experiments and mind control. What do they eat? They presumably have a similar diet to the small grey. Where do they come from? The large greys originate from a planet orbiting a massive red star named Betelgeuse in the Orion constellation. This is 427 light years from Earth. The star is viewable in the sky after midnight between east and southeast. The reptilian stands between 7 and 8 feet tall, and as expected has the look of a rectal, they too are erect standing bipeds. The head is slightly conical in shape and has two bony ridges riding from the brow across a back sloping skull. There appears to be no bridge between the eyes. The nasal openings are at the end of a small flattened nose and are described as two small slits that slant upwards in a V formation. Small openings can be seen on the side of their heads but no ears as such. The eyes contain vertically slit pupils was a flame or orange colored surround. They have wide lipless mouths which contain various types of teeth including fangs. Some of thin flashy spines under their chin. Their skin is scaled usually greenish brown or light gray in color and hairless. The scales on their backs, eyes and upper arms are quite large with hands abdomen and face being covered with smaller scales allowing more flexibility. Reptilian bodies are lean and firm with powerful arms and legs, long arms and three fairly long fingers and an opposable thumb. The feet of three toes and one recessed fourth toe that is towards the backside of the ankle. Claws on their hands and feet are short and blunt. They do not have teeth on their upper torso and there is no navel. How do they behave? The ruling caste of indigenous reptilians consider themselves to be the genuine natives of the earth and humans to be squatters. A group of reptilians is known as a hive on the race is absolutely void of any care concern or compassion for human beings. The worker caste can be friendly, as long 
as they are allowed to speak first, they will answer, if you address them, are very cautious beings and consider most humans to be hostile. They usually seem surprised, when they find that most humans are open and trustworthy. The working caste is generally used for physical labor and they have a no-nonsense get back to work attitude. They have a different attitude to time than humans, it is not as important to them in the way that it is to us. What do they eat? Meat, insects and a large variety of plants including vegetables and fruit. They prefer their meat raw and very fresh but have learned to enjoy some cooked meats like rare beef steak. Unlike the greys they eat frequently and usually carry or send for food during their breaks, the ruling caste is very secretive about their food. Preferring to eat in private. They enjoy much of the same food that humans do and are often seen secretly munching on a freshly found snail. Where do they come from? Earth. Yes Earth, an ancient extraterrestrial race of reptilians inhabited the Earth many years before man. There are two main types of Draco Reptilian, the Kaeger and the Warrior Cast. The Warrior Cast Draco, pictured here is a 7 to 8 foot tall biped and is feared throughout the galaxy, for its fighting ability. It has vertically slit pupils and skin similar to that found on the stomach of a lizard. The Kaeger Draco was considered to be the royal line of the Draco Reptilian race and ranged from 14 to 22 feet in height and can weigh up to 1800 pounds. They have winged appendages and are described as awesome and look remarkably like a dragon. Dracos are not seen as often as other reptilian aliens. They are similar in appearance to the indigenous reptilian but do have distinct physical differences. The Draco has wings, whereas the indigenous reptilian does not. The wings consist of long thin bony spines or ribs that protrude out of the back. The ribs are joined by flaps of leathery dark skin. Normally wings are kept in a retracted position. Another physical distance to the indigenous reptilian is that some Dracos have horns. They are located and develop midway between the brow and the top of the skull. Horns are conical in shape and have blunt tips. The Draco reptilian has a much more athletic build than other reptilian beings. Their upper torsos are extremely lean and their neck muscles splay out from the base of their jaw to their shoulder blades. How do they behave? They are extremely intelligent, clairvoyant and can be very sinister. According to the Draconian worldview they were the first intelligent species in the galaxy and seeded many worlds with their biological offspring. They therefore see themselves as the natural rulers of all reptilian controlled worlds such as the Earth and view humans as an inferior species. What are they up to? These aliens are in command of the Earth-based Reptilians. The Earth-based Reptilians are in turn in command of the large grace who are in command of the small grace. The Dracos are interested in harvesting the Earth's resources and ensuring that these resources are efficiently exploited. It is rumored that the Draco Reptilian species are involved in controlling human beings who hold high office and therefore controlling institutions and financial systems. What do they eat? Their diet is similar to the indigenous reptilian which includes lots of fresh raw meat. Where do they come from? The Draco reptilian originate from a planet which orbits Alpha Draconis, which is between Ursa Major and Ursa Minor. It is viewable in the northern and evening sky between north and northwest and is 250 light years from Earth. They are very human-like erect standing bipeds but with a slightly reptilian look about them. A varying skin color, some red some are beige some are black. They have a very high forehead which is almost cone-like. The planets around Sirius B are occupied by reptilian and aquatic beings. How do they behave? Their society is more motivated by political thought patterns and they are not religious. What are they up to? The Syrians are believed to have played a role in providing exotic technology such as time and interdimensional travel to shadow government agencies involved in both the Philadelphia Experiment and the Montauk Project. They were supposed to have had a role in the technology exchanges to help the U.S. develop military capability against future alien threats. The Assistance 
involved biological weapons research and it is claimed that the Ebola virus was given to the government by the Syrians. These beings are believed to have access to some sort of time travel which allows access to key points in time. Where do they come from? Syrians are from the Sirius B star, viewable from 5 a.m. in a southerly direction just above the horizon. This star is only 8.6 light. Years from Earth. They are human looking and are so named, because they resemble Nordic, Scandinavian or Aryan racial images, their hair is blonde and eyes are blue. They were tall some guess at 11 to 13 feet tall, statuesque and attractive. How do they behave? Nordics will not break the so-called universal law of non-interference, this is a law which is known about throughout our galaxy which states that Different races should not interfere with each other in any way, whether to benefit them or otherwise. They have a high regard for life. What are they up to? They choose primarily to just observe, perhaps their motives are to create a harmony between the different creeds of the galaxy. What do they eat? One thing is certain they do not eat other races of alien. Where do they come from? The Nordics. Come from the Pleiades star cluster in the constellation of Taurus. This is viewable from the northern sky after midnight between east and southeast and is 385 light years from Earth. They are very large 6 to 8 feet possibly 9 feet tall and human in appearance. How do they behave? They are religious but this does not necessarily mean they are benevolent, they have been known to be violent. What are they up to? They periodically return to the Earth to determine how effectively Earth's resources have been utilized by humanity and by those extraterrestrial races playing a role in managing humanity. The Anunnaki visited Earth around 300,000 years ago and allegedly helped to create man by interfering with evolution of an ancient version of man. They did this in order to create a race of slaves the human race, in order to carry out mining activities on Earth. The Anunnaki are involved in influencing long-term human evolution through elite groups, systems and institutions, and by influencing human consciousness. They may be in competition with the Draco Reptilian for control over the Earth. Where do they come from? Nidera which is an undiscovered planet within our solar system in a highly elliptical orbit. It has a 3,600 year long orbit, 